Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The visit of US Secretary of State John Kerry, his first after taking office to pursue the Indo-US strategic dialogue, the fourth one which ended this afternoon, was expected to narrow down some differences between the two countries. The Indo-US relationship which has seen its highs and lows can do with some pep added to the relationship amid some disappointments ex being expressed in certain quarters. The Indo-US nuclear deal which had taken off with much fanfare also has tapered off and the concerns over nuclear liability bill among other issues were addressed during the dialogue. The US moves in Afghanistan is another major concern for India. The economic issues, the proposed immigration policy in US which may harm Indian IT industry among others are all issues which are seen as having caused some strain in the relations. We will today look at the visit of John Kerry and the strategic dialogue between the two countries and whether it has helped narrow the differences. To discuss this, I have with me Ronan Sain, former Indian Ambassador to the United States, Mohan Guruswamy, Distinguished Fellow at the Observer Research Foundation, Professor K.P. Vijayalakshmi from the Center for American Studies at the JNU, and on the phone line from Washington, D.C., is Chidanand Rajgatta, Foreign Editor and the Washington Correspondent of the Times of India. Welcome to all of you. First, let me go to Mr. Ronan Sain. Mr. Sain, this uh, today, you know, the, the dialogue took place. There was a joint press conference between where, uh, John Kerry and uh, our our own Foreign Minister Salman Khurshid. One of the key issues which came up during that, during this strategic dialogue, obviously there are several issues which were discussed as uh, Mr. Kerry was pointing out. But Afghanistan is something which was very interesting what he said. From what we have been reading in the last few days and what he says today, there seems to be some change or nuance in their position. Do you agree? Yes, yes, I do agree. In fact, uh, uh, I think uh, the last week the developments have been fairly dramatic. Exactly. And, uh, uh, and what surprised me was, uh, very frankly, the, uh, you know, normally the announcement of the meeting, you know, first meeting in Doha between official meeting, I mean, open meeting between right. the U.S. representative and Taliban representatives because secret meetings had been going on in Doha, elsewhere also in, in Germany, Norway, elsewhere. we were told that it was yeah, being held Germany, in Germany, elsewhere also. But the point is that uh, I was amazed that it was not choreographed in terms of, you know, in, even in terms of essentials. Uh, and the extent to which the U.S. position seems to have been whittled away, you know. And so, uh, so to that extent, now that that is not immediately on the horizon. Right. Uh, this this rethink I, I today think, he, uh, today he says today yes. he said that you know this dialogue is not still on and we are we are very much in favor of Afghan led initiative and things like that which was not heard last week which was not heard last yes. week I think you know uh, I'm, uh, I, I think that basically it is for the U.S. government to you know decide what it's its own priorities and because we have they have there's a strong sentiment in the United States against uh, uh, their own, you know, troops continuing right. there. Uh, you know, because uh, day in, day out, week after week, you know, these body bags coming back, the, you know, the, there is a strong sentiment which he has to take into account. But uh, I remember, you know, the words of uh, 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 Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, because I was present during the visit of President Brezhnev to India in uh, 1980, immediately after the Soviets had moved in there in 1979, uh, basically saying that, look, uh, you have moved in, the Americans will move in automatically thereafter. But basically what we are concerned is that, you know, what has been done is a fine balance which has evolved o over centuries. Right. Uh, that has been disturbed. disturbed. And basically, uh, our concern is that when you go, ultimately, it's uh, you leave this in a place, a place in a mess, and we'll be carrying, you know, picking <laughs> right. up the pieces for a long time to come. So our concern is not. I mean, U.S. will make its policies according to its interests, but essentially, I think we'll have to look at it a little bit beyond the immediate concerns or the political, tactical, political uh, advantages or otherwise, and look at the. Uh, longer term picture. So I'm sure that uh, I don't think we would have scored any points. This is not a debating, you know, that yeah. uh, uh, 
uh, we don't uh, in these uh, in these dialogues we have a, normally a fair, uh, a fairly open exchange of views and we listen with respect to the other person but uh, I am sure that it would have been uh, uh, useful in terms of its eventual outcome. Mohan? You, if you, if you have I heard the press conference, he was, he said that you know now we are actually you know we we depend a lot on India. India has a, lo <coughs> a lot of investments there. India has a lot of interests there and things like that. We will not do what uh, we will not talk to Taliban unless of course all those conditionalities of being away from Al Qaeda and things like that. There seemed to be a very clear departure from their approach last week. You think that Indian government has been able to drill this? Uh, into their minds, and that is how that is why we see this change in. I I, I don't think so. I think the number one priority for the U.S. At, at this moment is to get out of Afghanistan with the least amount of blood, and they want to make a a fairly orderly exit. Yes. Okay. And and you know any dialogue with the Taliban and all will facilitate that. I think that is pretty obvious. Also obvious to them that we are not going to jump into Afghanistan. You know, we need to have our head examined to go in there. I think this is Pakistan's problem, really. They are the neighbors. It's Afghanistan, they can't digest it, nor can they spit it out. It's stuck in their craw. <laughs> so I think we'll all sit back and, you know, watch. All this thing that, you know, it'll all spill over to us and not, why do we have 15 divisions there on the border? Why do we have a 10 feet tall Fence right from from Kutch to Kashmir. Being, <laughs> so I don't think anything is of that sort has happened. We make these noises, but I think we're quite comfortably placed. Events are going to unfold in west of us. Whether they're going to be two countries or three countries or four countries, we don't know. Okay. But the U.S. intelligence estimates are saying by 2020, they expect a Pashtun nation <laughs> to emerge. <laughs> okay, and Chido, can you, uh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Chido, from the U.S. point of view, how important is this visit of Kerry to India? And what is it that the U.S. would be looking forward to as far as his you know, outcome is concerned on his visit? Well, uh, it is important because also because it's, uh, it's a run-up uh, to the visit of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh uh, to Delhi. And then in between that, uh, I believe now, Vice President Biden uh, will be in uh, uh, Delhi. Uh, so uh, it, it, this is a crucial year because, um, you know, President Obama, it seems, uh, wants to uh, seal certain uh, sort of geopolitical um, the deliverables. Uh, so they're trying to, you know, move things along, and uh, it's very clear that they, they want, uh, you know, to seal not a formal alliance, but a, but a really definite and long-lasting strategic partnership um, with India, which is which is which has been in the works for some some uh, years now. I I, I like to liken uh, this whole Indo-U.S. Uh, relationship to, uh, now to a sort of marriage, which is about you know 10 or 15 years old. Uh, it's it's settled in, it's stable, it's strong. It's kind of boring in some ways, um, and there are frequent disagreements, uh, there are occasional bickerings. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes it gets nasty, but by and large, it's a very stable relationship, and uh, they they want to seal it. The two things that you know, which is which are being discussed very, very uh, sort of uh, fervently. One is, of course, this whole uh, you know the the Asian the pivot, uh, which the U.S. has uh, talked about, which India is kind of reluctant to embrace uh, publicly. Uh, the U.S. is very clear that uh, you know uh, they want India on on board in uh, countering any you know Chinese uh, growth. India is sort of um, shy to sign up to that uh, uh, that whole theory. And then, of course, Afghanistan, where the two sides clearly disagree. You know, there was a stunning, uh, you know, announcement about dialogue with Taliban, right. which uh, probably may have been an overreach in Washington. I, again, here I liken uh, the, uh, you know, uh, um, U.S. overreach to, Afghan over, um, uh, to Afghanistan with uh, our own uh, quandary vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Maoists uh, right. in, in, in central India. Uh, there, are, there is a constancy in India which wants to talk to the Maoists, which thinks that, you know, they have a point, we should initiate talks, and so on. And there's another group which thinks they're nothing but thugs, right. and they need to be dealt with very firmly. Uh, and the same same uh, debate takes place in Washington vis-a-vis -vis Taliban. 
Um, you know, mm-hmm. there's a constituency which really thinks there's, there's no point talking to these yahoos. But uh, right now, uh, the constituency which wants to talk to them, which wants to get them on the table, um, you know, to pay way for a smoother U.S. exit from Afghanistan is in ascendancy. They almost pushed through this whole talks thing before someone woke up and told, you know, I think Secretary Kerry and his uh, staff that, you know, uh, you, you have to tread carefully. Yeah. And they, and they saw it right off the bat how the uh, Taliban betrayed them, yeah. um, you know, with that statement and unfurling of the flag. So these are all the positioning and posturing which is taking place. Uh, but the big picture is that uh, I think you and the U.S. and India have a good thing going. And uh, like I said, it's, 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 a, it's a stable marriage which is about 10 or 15 years old. Uh, okay. Stay on. I'll come back to you. Vijay Lakshmi, one of the things which is, uh, you know, which, which concerns uh, America is, and as, as I, in my intro, mentioned the Indo-US nuclear deal, then a lot of noise was made of that, and now it has tapered off. This, this meeting today, um, so they're, they're supposed to have discussed this also, and Kerry says that, you know, by September, there should be some kind of a commercial agreement uh, with the uh, nuclear power co- corporation and all that. You think this is something which the Americans look forward to very keenly? And India, will India be able to deliver that? I think so. You know, if there is a statement made, clearly the discussions have reached to that point that the statement can be made. So we just take it from there, you know. The statement is only made after sounding out the other side. Whichever side makes a statement, you can be sure that the discussions have reached that point where they can safely say or give a time. When you give a time, it clearly means that both sides have agreed on what are the basic steps to be taken, what conditions both expect to be meeting, and what are the deliverables. Only then the statement can come. Mr. But, you know, I have to say this, though. I just want to add that, you know, there is a story of the frogs which came out in the papers once, you know, about Afghanistan. A man goes to a bazaar and he has to buy frogs, uh, but he wants to buy a balanced one, you know. So Kerry's job apparently is something like that, you know, you put the frogs here and, and here. And they keep jumping oh, and they from keep one place jumping. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> Afghanistan is... is Afghanistan is, is a tricky uh, situation. It's it has tricky, been, tricky. It's been, it's been for decades and centuries also. Mr. Mr. Ronan said on this Indo- Indo-US nuclear deal, you think that we have reached the stage where they can, the nuclear liability bill is still pending and, you know, we, they are not satisfied with what we have done and there, there are problems. Well, there. it's... Uh, the United States has been disappointed with that, and not only that, but uh, you, the Russians had expressed reservations, the French had expressed reservations, because let's face it, we are the only only country uh, which has uh, these type of laws. Uh, virtually across the world, right. uh, no other country, I, I mean, I'm not counting every country in the world, but country with nuclear power programs, right. none of them have this law. So there are concerns. Uh, there have been delays on their side also with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission having to clear, they have cleared one company uh, in terms of their design, etc. In post Fukushima, there's been a, uh, uh, I mean, there, uh, there have been a fresh look at all these kind of things. Uh, uh, so Westinghouse has got the clearance, General Electric, I think we'll get that soon. But, uh, but uh, I think that uh, I agree fully that, you know, I think the discussions are going on. Maybe we could have expedited them, but there's no point in doing that. You know, I think we're doing a postmortem on that. We should look forward to it, and I, I think this will be done soon. No, yes. He has given, in fact, today, he said in the press conference that by September there should be some kind of a commercial agreement. I, I think so. I think we should get real on this. You're not going to have a... But and even, endless, even limitless no, do you agree that we, even know. within India there are still problems as far as the nuclear... I think, I think you know, is. there is... Problems because there is a traditional Pavlovian reaction. Anything with the Americans is bad, so scream and yell, you know. And that kind of thing is, government is paying too much of heed and credence to that. I think they should act, and this is why we have a leadership. Uh, and, you know, they should act and say, okay, you can't have limitless liability. No country in the world has this. The Russians are not going to give it to you, the French are not going to give it to you. So you're going to be with no nuclear plants, and you're short of electricity. And you need to get 20% of your power from from nuclear sources. That will take. Uh, I don't so know you know, his, we've got a lead time of 20 years here. So you can't keep postponing this. Yeah, yeah you, like you know, I wanted to come in on this. You know, if you the import of your question is actually very interesting because if you look at the Kudankulam situation, right. 
on May 7th, I think, the Supreme Court has given certain, you know, very clear and specific direction to both the government of India. So, in this case, what you would, what the world has understood and Americans have understood, that there is a people's participation in something so critical to us. It is critical, everybody in India agrees. It's the modalities and Fukushima, of course, that, brought that, it That up. is where the, the but, problem lies. But the Supreme Court has very clearly said this will go operational. And that has been a clear signal that yes, the government the, has to do th through, you know, proper procedures, but it is going to go ahead. So that's a clear signal that commerce in the nuclear field is going to continue. And that I think is, that, is the, that is the hope. That is the hope Kerry seems to have expressed, saying, you know, when he, when he gives some kind of a deadline to himself, saying that by September it will be uh, signed. Anyway, we will. We need to go into a very short break, but there are other issues uh, of serious concern for both the countries which needs to be discussed. Please keep watching. We'll come back very soon. Welcome back. We are looking at the visit of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to India and the strategic dialogue he held with uh, Foreign Minister Salman Khushid. Uh, coming to you, Chido, one of, the, one of the major concerns, even in the press conference, the joint press conference, which was held a couple of hours back, there was a lot of, uh, you know, there were questions being asked about the immigration policy, which is being discussed in America, which is going to hurt Indian interests. There has been a, there, there is an article in your own paper, Times of India, today from uh, one of the NASCOM, the, the NASCOM director talking about the, the, the concerns of the Indian IT industry. You think this is something which which can be sorted out to some extent during this visit of Kerry in India? Well, India is just a small a small part of this whole uh, you know immigration uh, issue, uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, you know it's not a very big part. It doesn't feature very you know uh, large on the U.S. Uh, uh, radar. Uh, the, the primary concern is, you know, how to uh, sort of uh, preserve American jobs, how to grow the U.S. economy, and so on. Uh, and uh, they, you know, everything is geared uh, towards that. And there's also, uh, you know, the, the, the principles here are really the, the Latinos, Hispanics. So that's that's a you know principal uh, part of the immigration. Um, so I don't think uh, you know the Indian concerns are going to be uh, taken on board very much. Uh, there are people who are batting for this whole H-1B uh, visas, um, basically guest worker visas, uh, which is what is impact, uh, going to impact the Indian IT industry. But yeah. uh, my sense is the Indian IT industry, will, like they have done so far, it is discriminatory in so many ways, but they've learned to live with it and then pass on the burden, you know, <laughs> to, to their uh, customers. Um, I, I'm really more concerned, actually, about, you know, what it is going to do to sort of the Indian uh, you know, uh, brains in the in the long run, because uh, uh, I'm more interested in the sort of green card uh, card provisions. And what I see here is that basically, if the U.S. goes ahead, you know, with plans to sort of stamp a green card on every uh, master's degree and PhD uh, candidate coming to the U.S., um, it'll simply suck the best brains out of India and keep it here. And all these years, we have actually functioned on the principle that. Uh, this is good because we have enough people and, you know, they'll go to America and uh, there's the remittances angle and so on. Yeah. But I think that honeymoon is coming to an end because uh, on the other side, on the financial side, the U.S. is squeezing down on remittances. So we just end up sending our best, you know, brains to the U.S. with and not much to show for other than a strong Indian-American community whose commitment at the end of the day will be to the uh, United States, not to India. So um, it, it, it's it's a very mixed bag, uh, and I, I particularly don't see um, you know India being uh, sort of well served in this whole immigration bill debate. Okay, uh, just here on yes, yes, which election? Quickly. You know, I was there uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, I did have chance to take part with some discussions with the telecom giants, and it was a special meeting uh, organized by the Indian Embassy. One of the problems is, I think you know, the people who can bat for you are now, right now, really, really angry or worried about your laws. One of the draft laws we have passed is this preferential market access and local components in some of the telecom equipment. Now, those people are definitely finding it, you know, something that uh, they worked very proactively on. They worked on the hill. Because the day I met those people, the next day, Dean Garfield, who's our NASCOMs, you know, that person, Somitil's uh, counterpart, 
part. He had already written to the Hill and the meeting itself, you know, they work like that. And therefore, you saw those angry letters and yes. all of that. Now, my sense is that if you think that, you know, your immigration is going to be just, you know, something that India says and government to government, it is broader than that. And as he says, you know, of course, it's about 11 million illegal immigration and all of that. So it's a bigger story. But in this specific case, I think you should look at your trade disputes and your investment Absolutely. disputes. Absolutely. That is what is actually connected yes, because Mr. U.S. Business Council is batting for you. Right. But not the counterpart of NASCOM. Right. Yes, Mr. Same. Uh, you know, it's a bit of, uh, I think uh, it has been put in a larger perspective. I think both, uh, I think comments I agree on. This is a large debate on immigration. Right. India and India doesn't footnote. figure as it's prominently to the, no, there it's as... it's a footnote. Huh? It's a footnote. It's a footnote. But also, you know, it's a very difficult argument to make that, you know, that you should take the interests of, perceived interests of Indian companies over the larger interests of aspiring Indian citizens. Right. So that's one aspect of the debate. That means you're making it easier for some people to just get in rather than some people coming in on temporarily to serve the interests of one company. This is one part of the debate. The other part is that you, essentially the issues of concern are not about H-1B visas and that. The issues of concern are parity in wages. Right. Absolutely. You can't say that you're going to pay below par wages and make a political argument that I'm going to pay less than the market. The second thing is that you can't say that we'll have the majority of people will be non-residents of the United States. What this act is saying, these are the two major issues of concern for right. IT companies. How do you make a political argument? Mohan? I think, I think there are two, two issues here. One is they're addressing a shortage of trained, exactly. highly trained Exactly. Personal and, labor. And, and yeah. one, of the, one okay. of the studies says that even in 2020, they'll still be <coughs> extremely yeah. short okay. of all so, this. You know, I think, I think, the uh, computer I think, science, I think, you know. I think giving green cards to young Indians to, to go there and settle down, and I think it's a good thing from their perspective, even from Mars, you know, that we have a lot of built up backlog now, which some of them didn't go. But the fact is that, you know, Indian companies are able to compete. You know, all the Infosys and the TCSs can compete there because you're offering IT services at $12, $14 an hour, which no, even, even yes. a worker on General Motors gets $40 an hour. So, you know, so, you know you're offering. And the American companies, like, like Microsoft and the others, you know, have got used to this labor being available on short-term basis. Yes. And this is good for the Indian economy because all this money comes is back. remitted back. Whereas the green card holder, once he's put his dug his roots there, doesn't really remit yes. much money, you know. So I think he, he'll be I think, repaying I think, his mortgages. I think, I think the American companies who are batting out there, you know. Anyway, watch his name, we are uh, running out of time. Uh, the Facebook about, fellow has been on no, the no, hill. No, we are running out of time. We I, have another, I have another major issue yeah. today. You know, uh, Mr. Sin, the, what he was, John Kerry was talking about. India being very important in the Indian Ocean, Pacific, and things like that. You know, the, these kind of talk, where does India see itself? You know, in the context of India, China, US relations. You think these are, these are the kind of talk which, can, which disturbs China and which creates some and creates problems for India to maintain that kind of a balance between the two countries? I think the, here the issue is that I think we should uh, uh, really, I think it's not just the United States, this is the, you know, on the so called pivot. Or what? Yes. I think the, the rebalancing is the current uh, usage. Uh, I think basically we should make up our own minds as to what is it that we want. What have is we, it that we want? We, have we made a in terms of the? You Asian think you think we have not made up our minds? No. I think what we have to do is there has to be an element of ambiguity. Right. But we should be clear also whether uh, whether I mean whether. We talk about multipolarity, whether we can live with multipolarity globally and unipolarity in Asia, or is it in our interest? I mean, so, so what we are doing is we are, I think we are skirting the issue, and, and, and a level of Im ambiguity is always useful because but the American United States, but the Americans, States. but Americans try. It's very clear that you know he's trying to push us into no, a certain no, kind no. of a situation. The United States has changed its position also. At the, but I think very clearly, the economic fulcrum has shifted to Asia. 55% of the right. global GDP yes. is coming here. If you look at shipments of U.S. 
imports and exports is mostly now on the West Coast. The East Coast is petering off in relation. And look at geography. Geography has put India in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Exactly. Right. And all the slocks run three, four hundred kilometers from us. Whether we like it or not, we have the power there. We have the biggest navy there. And we have, you know, if you, if you look at the stationing of, of so-called 30s at Tanjavur, you're going to cover a 5,000 kilometer radius from there. So, that, so you, that, know, you are a power. There. No, Mohan, yeah, so finally, Vijay me very quickly. So that, that makes Indian diplomacy, Indian government uh, work a little harder to balance interests between China and US? No, I think it's a very interesting position to be in. Because we are, in fact, having good relations with both. With both. So and I we, think also the world, the US. you know, and also this is the time the words are being used, Indo-Pacific. It right. used to be called Asia-Pacific Asia all the time. <laughs> now it's really called Indo-Pacific. Kerry said and, something uh, interesting yesterday. He said yeah. three new poles arising, yeah. three big economies. Exactly. You know? And the dynamics of this relationship is going to be important. And I think, you know, we have some long-term congruences with the U.S., emerging now, which is quite interesting. Okay. I think on that note, we need to end because completely run out of time. Those long-term congruences, but there, there'll always be some short-term problems which needs to be handled very uh, effectively and very, you know, selectively. And also, uh, we'll, we'll keep a close watch on what happens in the relations between India and, uh, India and the U.S. Prime Minister is expected to go to U.S. in the, uh, uh, later this year. So all these things will be watched very carefully. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Chidanand Rajgatta from Washington, Mr. Ronan Sen, KP Vijay Lakshmi, Mohan Gurswami. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.